Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're trying to establish at what angle the whole system will begin to accelerate. To do that, we need to first establish all the forces acting on the system. Starting out with the weight of block 1, we have m1g, which gives us the two components, one that's perpendicular, m1g cosine of theta, and one that's parallel to the incline m1g times the sine of theta. We also have the normal force, the surface pushing back, and the magnitude of the normal force is equal to the perpendicular component, so this is equal to m1g cosine of theta. We also have the force of gravity pulling down on block 2, m2g, and we have one more force, which is the friction force, and the direction of the friction force will be opposite to the assumed motion. We're going to assume that the whole system will accelerate in this direction, around the pulley like this, which means that the direction of the friction force will be opposite to that assumed motion. It will be in this direction. Force friction is equal to the normal force times mu. In this case, we're assuming that everything is static, not moving. And this is therefore equal to m1g cosine theta times mu sub s. Now, in order for there to be an acceleration, there must be a net force. And we know that F equals MA, or more specifically, the net force on the system equals the total mass of the system times its acceleration, which means that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the total mass. And in this case, the net force is going to be all the forces aiding the acceleration minus the forces opposing the acceleration, all divided by the total mass. Now, the forces aiding the acceleration are in the same direction as the assumed acceleration. The forces opposing are in the opposite direction of the assumed acceleration. A is equal to, the forces aiding is going to be this force right here, M1g sine theta minus the force opposing, well, one of them is going to be the friction force, and one more force, it's the weight of this block hanging down from that rope there, will be m2g, all divided by the total mass, m1 plus m2. And now you realize that you will not have an acceleration until the net force is greater than zero. So we're going to find the point at which the net force is equal to zero. A is equal to, plug in some numbers, or another way to look at it is this. When A will be greater than zero, when the net force is greater than zero. So we're looking for the condition where the numerator of this fraction here is greater than zero. That means that we want m1g sine theta minus m1g cosine of theta times mu sub s minus m2g. We want that to be greater than zero. Right away, you can see that we can cancel out all the g's. And next, what we can do here the only variable that we don't know is going to be theta. Theta is the value that we're looking for. Which means that we can move the m2 to the other side and factor out an m1 from the left side. That gives us m1 times sine of theta minus cosine of theta times mu sub s is greater than, when we move the minus m2 to the other side, becomes a positive m2. And then when we move M1 over there, and then let's get to some more board space. So we end up with the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times mu must be greater than, and this is mu sub s, must be greater than the fraction M2 over M1. Plugging in the numbers that we have, we can say that the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times mu sub s. The mu sub s is 0 0.25, must be greater than the ratio of m2 to m1, which is 2 to 5, 
which is equal to 0 0.4. So we're looking for the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times 0 0.25 to be greater than 0 0.4. Now here we cannot actually algebraically solve for theta. But what we can do is set up a table of values and try to get close to the value. For example, I'm going to plug in some values for theta and then see what the corresponding value is for the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta times 0 0.25. And the objective is to find the angle where this will be very close to 0 0.4. So let's try the angle, uh, let's try 45 degrees. Let's see what that gives us. If theta is 45 degrees, then we take the cosine of 45 times 0.25, make that negative, plus 45 times the sine equals and we get 0 0.53, 0 0.53, which is larger than what I'm looking for, 0.4. So we realize that at 45 degrees, we definitely will have a positive value for the net force and there will be an acceleration. But we want to try to find the point at which it begins to slide down the incline. So let's try a smaller angle. Let's try 40 degrees and see what happens. At 40 degrees, we take the cosine of 40, times 0.25, make that negative, and add that to 40, take the sine of that, equals, and I get 0 0.45. We're not quite there yet, but we are getting closer. Notice 40 degrees will still give us a net force and there still will be an acceleration. Hmm, I'm getting close, so let's try 38 degrees. All right, so we take 38, take the cosine of that, times 0.25, make that negative, plus 38, take the sine of that, equals, and now I get 42, so 0 0.42, that's really close, so maybe 0 0.36, 36 degrees, 36 degrees, let's try that. So 36, take the cosine of that, times 0.25, make that negative, plus 36 times, take the sine of that, equals, and now we're down to 0 0.386. So it looks like it's somewhere between 36 and 38 degrees. Hey, let's try 37. Take the cosine times 0.25, make that minus plus 37, take the sine equals, and that's really close. When the angle is 37 degrees, I get 0 0.402, and so there's the solution. When you increase the angle and reach an angle of 37 degrees, finally, this force will be large enough to overcome both the friction force and the weight of block two, and therefore the, uh, the whole system will begin to slide, will begin to accelerate. And that's how we do that. Even though we don't exactly get a way in which we can algebraically narrow down to a single value, we can at least try some table of values, experiment with some values, and zero in on the correct value. And that's how that's done.